How you doing, YouTube? Matt, Massive Beer Reviews, back with yet another review. A little bit of a Louisiana wax top, hopeful deliciousness, in the form of Parish Brewings. It is their Grand Reserve Cellared Annual Ale, 2017. Like one and seven, I can't do that with my hands. Anyway, um, yeah, this is the second wax top um, cellared annual ale from Parish I've had. The first one, I was blowing away by it was a belgian dark beer it was fucking phenomenal so i'm super excited to dive into this one these come courtesy of Corey. thanks very much brother he sent me off a bunch of louisiana awesomeness so i'm really excited about this one uh what do we have here uh like i said grand reserve cellar annual ale um on the side here patience grand reserve should be saved and shared brewed once a year our barley wine ale this is a barley wine son it is a characterization of intensely complex malt uh, hop and fermentation profile. Strongly and robust. It will gracefully, uh, age gracefully when cellared. Done and done. 2017. Parish Brewing Company. Awesome label. I dig, dig it. This castle reminds me of... There was this horrible game on Atari. Dating myself. It was called Gateway... No, it wasn't Gateway to Aspia. God damn, what was the name of that game? I'm not going to be able to think of it now. But there was this horrible game where you had to... It was horrible. Like... I can't even tell you how bad the game was. It was like, I, I looked up a video of it not too long ago. That's why it's kind of remind me of it. But um, you're just basically a pixelized like stick figure. And then you have to go all through all these rooms and get this key. And you have to take this key back to this location before this kind of goblin ghost thing gets to you. But it's all in like, not 8-bit, like 1-bit. I forget the name of the goddamn game. Anyway, you'd have to enter a castle. That's exactly what the castle looks like. So I know I had to end the story sometime. Oh, my God. If this beer sucks, then my faith in humanity is actually gone. Because you're going to talk about barley wines. Awesome. I can get down with barley wines. Look, a little bubble on top. Have fun. Um, I can talk about barley wines all day. Um, till my bubble bursts. Um, but uh, <laughs> my wife's over there and she's laughing at my cheesiness. Um, but... A lot of people get them wrong. Even American, even English, you know, they, they they nail a lot of the components. You know, your burnt brown sugar, your dates, your figs, your toffee, your raisinets, all that stuff. The biggest knock I see a lot of people have when it comes to making barley wine brewer wise is the body. They tend to come up a little bit thin and a little bit too candied. They lack that murkiness. Look at how murky. That looks like like mom and pop farm apple cider that's what a barley wine should look like big rich haze on it um the head on it is like kind of like a weird vibrant khaki color um almost a malt ball in color i mean this looks ugh, that's why i said if it's not good then it's hard to make let's put it this way a beer beer's look does not a good beer make but it's really hard to generate this kind of haziness and have a really a shit-tastic beer. At least I'm from my experience. Anyway, I'm just going to take a whiff. Clogged up nostrils. We'll see how they work today. Not a huge nose. Um, you know, I'm actually getting a little bit of apple vibes from it. I'm getting a little subtle apple vibes that's wrapped around a nice, rich kind of... It's not burnt brown sugar, but it's not necessarily caramel or anything that crazy. It's just a nice, rich kind of... Um, a sugar with depth to it. It wants to get too toffee. It wants to get to date and figs. It wants to get to raisin, but I think it needs more time to get to that point. I think this is a beer. In the end, I might say, sell her this shit for five years and crack it. But it smells nice. It's just not over the top, like, you know, next level shit. It's just got a nice nose. Yeah, it smells like barley wine. Let's give it a taste. Cheers. Okay, guess what? This beer needs some time. Um, there's a big, sweet, sugary component to it, and it's 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 definitely in that brown sugar level. It hasn't matured. It hasn't hashed itself out and matured into something a bit more complex and a bit more robust. There's a big hop presence to it too. I didn't really get that on the nose. There's a big, bittering, old school. Like sea hops, there's a little bit of fruitiness in there actually, but it's like kind of sea hops. It's your, 
your Centennial and all your old school, maybe even like English Kent Golding, Fuggly stuff. But I'm getting a big bittering component, a little bit of fruit on that, that fruit in it. It's like buried citrus almost like, but it's not that big. I mean, that tannic tea-like spicy hot profile is the biggest portion of the show. And it's it's got a nice mouthfeel to it. The sweetness is there. The sh that brown sugar component is there. That that hops are there for the longevity portion of the show. It's just literally they said you can sell this with age. This one should be like don't open this shit for five years minimum. Um, it's still a nice beer. It's still tasty. It's not overly complex. It doesn't have a ton of depth to it. But I can taste the awesomeness in there. I can taste that it's going to age into something, not just age gracefully. It's going to come out as a bang and, and turn into some kind of epic level, Thomas Hardy-esque, old stocky kind of beautiful beer. It just needs time, man. It's one thing you can't fake. You fake a lot of different things, uh, but you can't fake time when it comes to spirits and alcohol and beer and stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, I like it. I dig it. It doesn't blow me away like the previous one does, but, you know, Belgian darks, while they age fucking amazingly, um, you know, they're not as reliant on age as barley wines. And that one also has an additional year in it. It goes a long way. But this one, I'm looking at five years. I want this. To, I want to open one of these in 2022. And then I think it's going to really hit its stride. You know, longer, 10 years, it's probably going to get, like, cash money awesome. Um, but, yeah, tasty, nice, fun. It's kind of like a pseudo-American barley wine. It's English, heavily hopped English barley wine. But I think it's hopped that way for the long haul in order to turn into something amazing. So I think they have a lot of, like, you know, long-term thinking when it comes to this beer down there in Paris. So I like it. I dig it. Um, it doesn't blow me away, but at the same time, it, I think it's going to blow me away in about five years. Um, so let's talk about it. Is it one of the better barley wines I've had as of late? As of late? Eh, not really. Um, but ask me again in five years, or someone send me one of these in five years, and I'll probably tell you it's absolutely fucking amazing. Bag and availability? No idea. Um, I could see wax top, barley wine, huge, and, you know, this is probably pushing 30 bucks, I would assume, but somebody let me know, Corey or whatever, and leave you with, if you like what we like this, if you like barley wines, if you like a little bit of bittering on your barley wine, or you like to age beers, that's where this one stands. It needs to be aged. Age it. Let it sit. Crack it in five years. Rewatch this review, and then tell me how awesome it is. And then I'll cry into my keyboard that I don't have one. So there you go. Another review in the books. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer massive if you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice little Bali wine right now. And hope to see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>